How are you guys doing? Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Okay. I'm looking forward to it too. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of like to get outside if it's warm enough. Get some fresh air, get some sunshine. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, you have called us from among the people and nations of this fallen world to be your own, to be your redeemed people. And we pray that you would help us to serve you better with our lives. We pray that you would keep us steadfast in the faith. And as we look for the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, May we today kneel before you in prayer, and may we boldly confess your name every day of our lives. To you be the honor and the glory, now and forever, in Jesus' name, amen.
Christ has broken death's strong chain. Hark the angels shout for joy, singing evermore on high. Hallelujah. He who gave for us his life, who for us in the strife is our Paschal Lamb today. We to sing for joy and say Hallelujah. He who bore all pain and loss, comfortless upon the cross, lives in And here's our cry, Hallelujah. He whose path no records tell hath descended into hell. He the strong man arm hath bound, and in highest heaven is crowned. Slumbered in the grave, he is exalted now to save. Now through Christendom it rings that the Lamb is King of Kings. Hallelujah. Now he bids us tell abroad. Now the lost may be restored. How the penitent forgiven, how we too may enter heaven. Hallelujah. Thou art Paschal Lamb indeed, Christ today thy people feed. Take our sins and guilt away that we all may sing for a Hallelujah. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Congregation may rise as we continue with our worship that you find in your bulletin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thoughts, words, and deeds. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord, Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may have everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake. He forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Alleluia. Christ has risen as he said. He has risen from the dead. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Christ is living, gone with sorrow, tears and terror be no more. Death and grave, you now are nothing. Christ is free of every power. Why then seek the living Savior in the haunts of death and fear? Christ is risen, shout the good news, so that all the world may hear. For if Christ is not arisen, there is nothing to believe. Truth be told, he keeps the promise, since I live, you too shall live. Dust we are, to dust return, but in restored. Doubt dispelling, claim the triumph, Jesus is the living Lord. Death is swallowed up in victory, sin has lost its poison sting. Life will blossom from the grave soon. Christ, the first fruits of the spring. For the sureness of salvation, let us sing. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. We are living. Spread the word of grace. The Lord be with you. We pray, we include in our prayer a prayer for our brother Jim Preby. Jim had been admitted to the hospital a few weeks ago. He was there for quite a long time with an infection, but he also has severe pain in his neck. He returned home, but then the next day he ended up back in the hospital. Let us pray for our brother Jim. Lord, the one whom you love is sick. We ask that in your mercy you would visit the bedside of your loved one with your blessed healing power. With the tender touch of your grace, help him, dear heavenly physician. We ask that if it is your will, his illness will soon be remedied. We ask that you show a wonderful manifestation of your majesty in healing your friend. We ask also that if it is not your will that he be healed above all else, that you keep in him that perfect peace, the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Help us, his brothers and sisters and his family, minister him with your precious word. We pray for our brother Jim, and we know that in your nail-scarred hands, he is in perfect care. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Congregation may be seated. <clears throat> when we think of Easter, we think of eyewitnesses. So many, many eyewitnesses to the <coughs> resurrection of our Lord. Someone once said that if all the eyewitness testimony would be brought into a courtroom, there'd be 50 some hours of testimony, far more than any other type of court situation. And so in 1 John chapter 2, we read of how John and the other disciples were eyewitnesses, and that they were able to touch him and to handle him, and of course, what that all means for us. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our next lesson is from the book of Job, from chapter 19. We read verses 20 through 27. And here in the Old Testament, Job is already looking ahead to his resurrection, a resurrection that is his because of his Savior's resurrection. And notice how he says that in his flesh he will see God. When we speak of the resurrection, we are talking about an actual bodily resurrection. That's how Jesus rose, and that's how one day you and I will rise as well. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book that they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eye shall behold, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Hallelujah, this is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hallelujah. Congregation is invited to stand as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 193 in the red hymnal, 193. Let us pray. Dearest God, as we contemplate the wonder of your resurrection and what that means for us, our resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, life eternal, may that news, that tremendous news, give us courage and boldness to confess you before a sinful and a world hostile to your truth. When we fail to confess your name before the world, we pray for your forgiveness. We ask that you bless our study here now, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you open up your bulletins, and you'll find the sermon text, which is from actually John 21, verses 15 through 17. What's going on here is that it's after Jesus rose, and he uh, appears on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. The disciples have been fishing all night. They haven't caught a thing. He tells them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat, and they bring in this amazing catch of fish, 158 large fish. They come to shore. They find that Jesus has breakfast waiting for them, a campfire. And then our text is about a conversation that the Lord had with Peter. And so we read God's word beginning at verse 15 of chapter 21 of John. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed 
tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. These are God's words to us, his inerrant word to us, his holy word given for our sanctification and edification. May he bless our study. Dear friends in Christ, hey, I really need to talk to you. What do you say when someone says something like that to you? I I really need to talk to you. Is it, oh no, what did I do now? Maybe it's your boss, you messed up some project at work. Hey, I need to talk to you about this. Or it could be a Christian friend who's concerned about the direction that your life has been taken. taking. I need to talk to you about that. Pastor maybe seeking out a, a wayward church member. Or a member talking to pastor about his, one of his many, many failings. I need to talk to you. I remember when I was in school at ILC way back in the last millennium, there were occasions when one of my professors would call me aside and say, hey, Mike, I, I need to talk to you about something. And maybe at the time I didn't really appreciate that they were doing that, but now I, I really do appreciate it. I thank God that they had enough care and concern for me to speak to me about things that I really needed to hear. These heart-to-heart talks, they're a good thing. We should have more of them. They can make a tremendous difference in our lives, especially when those heart-to-heart talks are with Jesus, as we see here today. We see Jesus having a very serious and, on Peter's part, a painful conversation with, with his Lord. But as you listen I think you can tell he's talking to you as well and talking to me. So what is the topic of this very serious conversation that we're allowed to listen in on? Well, for starters, it's about Peter's love for Jesus. So we remember Peter's big brag, right? The night that Jesus was arrested, Peter said, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. He even even said that he would die for the Lord. Big words. And that's all they were. Because we also know that he denied his Lord not once, not twice, but three times. I just, I don't know that guy. I don't know him. It was time for a talk. So Jesus says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Maybe something worth pointing out is he doesn't call Peter, Peter. Peter means rock, solid, dependable. No, he doesn't use that name in this conversation. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? So you really love me more than these other guys, Peter? Hmm. Now, I know they all acted cowardly when I was arrested, but I don't recall any of them denying that that they knew me. Do you still claim, Peter, to love me more than these? Well, I can imagine... Peter, right about then, looking for the nearest rock to climb under. Yet, Peter humbly accepts the admonition and simply replies, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But Jesus isn't finished. A second time he asks, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Now, notice that Jesus doesn't add the words more than these to the end of this question. It's as if the Lord is saying, It's obvious, Peter, you don't love me more than the rest of the disciples, But I'm kind of wondering, Peter, if you love me at all. Again, Peter meekly replies, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. I'm sure Peter was hoping that this is the end of the conversation, that, that, you know, Jesus has made his point. But no, not yet. Once again, Jesus asked, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? It's worth pointing out, three denials... Three questions about Peter's love for him. Now, it doesn't come out in the English translations, but this word in this final question, the word love, is not the same as the first two. 
In the first two, the word love are that highest kind of love, agape love, the most um, powerful love, the highest love, self-sacrificing love. But now this is a lower kind of love. It's as if Jesus is saying, Peter, do you even like me? Are we friends? In effect, Jesus is saying, you know, true friends, they don't run out on each other the first sign of trouble. This is a tough conversation. This is a pretty rough conversation for the Apostle Peter. Many of us remember when we were younger, how at times we were, we were in need of muscular Christianity, if you know what I'm talking about, where mom or dad, and we usually hoped it was mom that was meeting out the muscular Christianity, how mom or dad would say, this is going to hurt me worse than it does you. And we thought, yeah, right. But it really did. I remember, I still can remember this, I was four years old at the time. Uh, we lived in Austin, Minnesota, attended St. Paul's Lutheran Church there, um, same place where Pastor David Schoenbeck grew up. And I was doing something during the church service. Dad took hold of me. The church had a basement, and this long, winding stair down to the basement, and I, like going down in the dungeon, the torture chamber. And so there was discipline, muscular Christianity. But I know for sure, even though I don't remember all the details, but just knowing my dad, after it was done, son, I still love you, I forgive you, and Jesus loves you too. That hasn't changed. So our parents disciplined us out of love. And by going through this difficult conversation with Peter, we need to realize that, that this is a conversation that comes from the loving heart of his Savior. Peter needed this conversation. He needed to be disciplined. He needed to be humble because in his case, he was relied, and he did this quite often, on his own power, his own strength. He needed to learn to rely on Jesus' strength, his power, um, in times of temptation especially. It's the same with us. Truly, Jesus loves you and me with a love beyond our comprehension. And sometimes he needs to take us to task. When might that happen? Well, that might happen in a Sunday morning sermon, where from the text, the pastor is, boy, he's talking about me. <laughs> he's talking about my failures, my weaknesses, my sins. It might happen when a Christian friend calls you aside cares enough about you to remind you what the Bible says about some sinful attitude or sinful action that you are displaying. Or it could be you just open the Bible. You read something and ouch! That passage is addressing one of my particular sins. What might Jesus in particular need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you about? Think about that. Maybe it's, maybe it's the things that you watch online that you shouldn't really be watching. Or maybe it's the movies I watch or the jokes that we tell or the language that we sometimes perhaps use. Maybe he needs to talk to you about how you treat your spouse or how you might grumble and complain every time your mom or dad asks you to do something. Perhaps he might need to talk to you and me about our attitude toward worship. When we woke up, was it with the Spirit... Let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Maybe when we come here, sometimes we go just through the motions. Maybe the Lord needs to talk to us about those things. But whatever it is, he does so out of purest love. Because you see, finally this text is not so much about Peter's love for Jesus. It's more about Jesus' love for Peter. So that's what's going on here. Jesus is assuring Peter, despite the really awful thing he did, that he still loves him, that he loves him with that unconditional, self-sacrificing, highest kind of love, and that his love would always be there for Peter throughout his earthly life all the way through eternity. Now you might be thinking, well, where do we find that in this particular text? This aspect of Jesus' love for Peter, maybe 
doesn't stand out so much at first glance, but it's there. Follow me here. So, Jesus responds to Peter's statements, you know that I love you, Lord, um, in a way that maybe doesn't seem to fit the topic. Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. Okay, then, Peter. Okay, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. So do you see it? What Jesus is doing is saying that nothing has changed between you and me, Peter. I still love you. I still forgive you. I'm not kicking you off the team. I still want you to be one of my apostles. I'm giving you the privilege of, of feeding my sheep, my lambs, tending them with the word of God that I have taught you. So Peter is being assured that despite his sin, the Lord's not going to toss him aside. That's what the, the heart heart finally comes down to. Peter, I love you. I do, and I always will love you. Peter could, could leave his sin at the foot of the cross, leave his guilt behind, and go forward with joy and gladness in serving his Lord. So let's pretend or imagine that it's us sitting around that campfire that day long ago, early in the morning, by the Sea of Galilee. And as you do, you look over at Jesus and you're saying, boy, oh, I kind of feel guilty because I know I have failed him so many times. I have sinned against him so many times. And maybe he's going to call me aside and have a heart to heart with me. And so you're sitting there and then Jesus hands you a piece of fish. And there you see it. You see the place where the nails were driven into his hands. And along with those nails, your sins were also nailed to that cross. All of them, your sins, my sins, the sins of the entire world. Jesus took upon himself the damnation that you deserved. He was damned in your place. He took upon himself the hell that I deserved in my place. And so, yes, we do at times need to be called to task but as we turn to our Lord in daily repentance, he's always there, assuring of us of his unconditional love, his full and free forgiveness, and a wonderful future in serving him. In fact, Jesus loves you so much that sinners like us, loves us sinners, that he actually wants to spend all of eternity with us. That is amazing. So on that note, why don't we end our heart-to-heart -heart talk with these words from our Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me. Believe also in God. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. That's a good place to stop with our heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus this morning. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. As the offering is brought forward, the congregation may take hold of the Brown Worship Supplement, and we will continue with our worship on page 17 of, the, of that book, uh, The Service of the Sacrament.
and the congregation may be seated. Dear Savior Jesus Christ, there is no work or sacrifice we could ever do to turn away God's just anger from us. But everlasting thanks to you because through your suffering, through your death on the cross, you have won a full pardon for our sins. You have established peace with God in our behalf. This peace God announced unmistakably to the whole world when he raised you from the dead. Now peace and forgiveness will always be ours, for you ever live to make intercession for us in heaven. Our ever-living Lord, this peace which you brought to us sinners fills our souls with a holy joy, for we know that whenever we meet God, we shall stand before him unaccused, uncondemned, and unpunished, and that at the last we will be received into the everlasting joys of heaven. Father, though the reminders of your curse upon sin are still very evident in the thorns, thistles, the weeds that plague the ground, in the toil, pain, and death that are so much part, a part of this life right now, nevertheless, fill our hearts with peace so that these things hold no terror for us. As our Father in Christ Jesus, hear us when we pray, and according to your will, remove the things that distress us and so that we may experience the peace which surpasses all understanding, pardon our offenses as we daily plead the merits of your Son. Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us faith to receive God's offer of peace through Jesus. Grant that we remain steadfast in our faith so that we may never lose our redemption purchased with our Savior's blood. Cause the peace which God has declared through Christ to rule in our hearts so bountifully that we will serve our God in all that we do and live in peace and love with our fellow man. Broadcast throughout the world that blessed message of pardon and peace in the crucified and risen Christ and draw the hearts of sinners to the Savior, calling them to repentance. In the blessed name of Jesus, we ask it, amen. And hear us, dear Lord, as we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right and beneficial that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, ever praising you and saying. Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation may be seated. Our practice concerning the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, is known as close communion. And so we ask that the members of our congregations or of our congregation or of one of our sister congregations be the one that partake of the sacrament at our altar. Please know that our practice is in no way intended to judge anyone's faith. We are simply striving to be true to the word of God as we have learned it. If you are looking for an altar at which you would like to commune, please speak to me, the pastor, and I'd be happy to sit down with you and help you prepare with the word of God to take the Lord's Supper with us. And we thank you very much for your understanding. The communicants may come forward at the direction of our usher. Take and eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sin. Take and drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, both strengthen and keep you in the true faith. To life everlasting, depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, both strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting, to part in peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, both strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, both strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Congregation may rise. O Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. For I have seen the glory of your redeeming like to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through Go in peace, serve the Lord with gladness. Bless the wings of near dwelling, O blessed Holy Trinity, with angels I your praises telling, shall live in joy eternally. Lord, may your body and your blood be for my soul the highest good. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. may be seated for our closing Oh. 
and earth unto the sky. Our Christ has brought us over with hymns of victory. He is risen, he is risen. Christ the Lord is risen. Our joy shall have no end. Let all things seen and unseen their notes of gladness blend. For Christ the Lord is risen. Our joy shall have no end. He is risen. He is risen. Christ the Lord is risen. Our joy shall have no end. <coughs> Good morning again. Let's look at our announcements. So there's no Wednesday Bible class this week um, because I will be in Eau Claire, Wisconsin for meetings. Um, I'll be back, Lord willing, Thursday morning. So uh, I, you can be reached. We have cell phones now, so if you need anything, just give me a call. Um, notice a little bit of news about our new teacher and family that might interest you. Uh, we thank Group B for last week's, uh, all the work they did for our Easter breakfast. That was very, very well done as always. And just uh, looking at uh, our Great Lakes Delegate Conference and CLC Convention, they're coming up pretty quick. So um, we are... Um, in need of two delegates for each of those, you could serve at both the delegate conference and the convention if you'd like, or just one or the other. So let me know about that as, as soon as you're able. And let's see. I think maybe that's it right now. You can look at the upcoming. Any other announcements we should make? Any birthdays or anything like that? Okay, the Lord be with you now and always. <coughs> 